I'll preface it by saying that I'm sometimes quite uh, skeptical about worker placement cooperative games. The culture world, the cooperative fashion. What do we think? What is it like? Stay tuned. Hi, it's Tarrant. And Stella here from Meeple University. Welcome back or welcome to our review video. This time we have Viticulture World, which is the expansion of Viticulture. The cooperative expansion, that is. Yes. Viticulture has been out for a while. It's been favorite of many, whether you, wa you like wine or not, the game. Is a worker placement awesome game from Son Maya Games? That's my description of Viticulture Terran. Yes, one of the uh, one of the early ones, one that was already on the shelves when we both started getting into uh, games back in 2016. Wow, it hasn't been that long. It has been that long? No, it's not that long for some. It's been out for a while. <laughs> That's it. That's basically it. All right, so. What we're gonna do, we're gonna tell you a little bit, just a really quick overview of Viticulture, and then we dwell in a little bit more to, uh, about Viticulture World and what we think. So Viticulture World, it comes with another new board. I think there's now three or four different Viticulture boards out there, the original and the Tuscany and, and so forth. Uh, it comes with a new board, which fits with the mechanisms of this game. At its core, it's like traditional viticulture. You uh, plant vines on your fields. I haven't put the field cards here, but you plant vines on your fields or sell them for money. Uh, you use those vines to create grapes, you use those grains to create wine, and you use those wines to sell them and get uh, money and points. And the aim of the game in cooperative viticulture is all players in the space of six rounds need to score 25 or more points. And collectively, all players need to make the influence marker reach the end of the track. And how far you've got to go will depend on your player count. So I guess it puts into perspective with, um, tells you how quickly viticulture can actually go if you get an, an engine kind of working together to, um, to score those points. You can, should be able to do it within six rounds. It works kind of like the original viticulture. So there are only two worker placement rounds, the summer and the winter, as distinct from the Tuscany board where there was worker placement in all four seasons. The difference here is that you've got four workers, sorry, you've got four normal workers and your grande worker. And the normal workers each begin the game with a summer or winter hat. And that means that that worker can only be placed in that season. When you train your workers, which is obviously a critical thing in the base bit of culture, uh, to get new workers, in this case you're training them into flexible workers that can uh, be in summer or winter. And when you do that, you take the hat off and, it's, uh, and you get the safety dance in your head, no doubt. <laughs> So this is a cooperative game, you're playing against the game, so what does the game throw back at you, is the key question. Wine. Trust you. No. <laughs> so the game, as in base viticulture, there's a big part of the game which is based on the cards you draw, and in particular the visitor cards you draw, how you can uh, utilise those to turn it into points or wines or whatever you need to do. The second thing is the events. So there are, there's a version of, of this game on all the different continents. Uh, this is the Australia version here, for example. <laughs> there's a North American one. And what these will do, they will introduce an event each round. And these are primarily geared at one of the main ways to score influence. Essentially, each player should have one or more ways of gaining influence by doing what's on the event cards at the right times. And you can play these with a predetermined deck order or you can randomize it so you won't quite know what's happening. The third way the game throws thing at you, things at you is these tiles here. These are called the innovation tiles. And it's probably the most critical element of the game. Uh, you've got all the actions here on the board and there's what, 16, 17 of them. Uh, but they start relatively weak, and they start with only one or two people being able to place workers there. 
as you go through the game, you'll be paying to upgrade these spaces to make them either more powerful by putting a better action over the top, or to give them higher occupancy and a bonus for trained workers by placing one of these over it. So now instead of only being able to play one worker or two workers, depending on the player count, with this here I could put any number of workers, and if it is a trained worker, that is no hat, uh, get to pick up a purple card as well. And grande worker. Yes. And this worker. Yes. So that is, those are the things the game is throwing at you. These will come out in a different order, and so you've got to pick the right ones to play and then work your strategy around it. Uh, you've got to work these cards here and make sure you're gaining the influence because if you don't get influence off these cards, you're going to struggle to reach the end. And as always, work the uh, yellow and blue cards. And the orange cards, if you're playing with the structures expansion as well, it is compatible. It's quite nice. I quite like the orange cards. Um, so yeah, that's it. Everyone has to get to 25 and push the influence up. There's only really three ways to gain influence. One is from these event cards. One is through a new action where you cash excess money in for influence. And one is if a player uh, overshoots the win and gets to 30 points, you can get influence for that. And there is also a card that will affect the other player. So when you go to do a certain things required, which is this one, and then the other player gets it. Yes, and that will depend on the scenario. There's, like, in the Australia map here, uh, each player has a, a card like this and you'll be advancing on this track through the game by doing certain actions at the right times. And these will uh, give you ongoing bonuses either for yourself or other players. And this will vary based on the scenario. Great. There is sharing involved. If you place your Grande worker where someone else has a worker, you can uh, do a trade with them of certain uh, types of things, which is a good feature to have in a cooperative game as well. Indeed. And there we have it. So, what do you think? What do you think? Okay, me first. <laughs> you like your answers and then I trip. Anyways. So, I do enjoy viticulture. As with other worker placement games, there's always a fear of a particular space is blocked by your opponents. And, you know, it is part of the game. It is like all other worker placement. But being cooperative, remove that fear from me because there's no more fear. We talk about what we're going to do to optimize our turns because we win together, we lose together. Mm -hmm. And that is just a twist to the game. You still enjoy making wine, doing the worker placement spaces without that fear because it's cooperative. Does that make sense? Because, you know, always like, oh, these days, there are lots of twists to worker placement. There might as well be, or there are already, that you can go to the same place, for example, with deploying more workers, like the golems, the endless world, for example. And there are other twists, as I say. But I think it is really clever. It's really close. It's really tight. You kind of want to really work together to make sure we got each other's bonuses that we have one person to do this, the other person to do that. One person will almost always need to have this extra worker to maximize our turns. We did seem to go for that one. Uh, we, at least we did. Quite a lot. Because mm. actions are tight. You never, oh, very. You never realize that a game of viticulture only goes six or seven rounds until you realize that this game forces you to find you know, it's like when you realize that Scythe, the solo card, is basically a... It takes you through like 14 or 15 rounds because that's how long it should take to get your stars out. Um, it kind of realizes there's a mathematical optimum here that you then uh, have to work towards. Which I'm not really that good at math, but I kind of like really enjoying the process of, um, you know, do you, what do you want to upgrade? You can still do upgrades on your board to make your actions more powerful, or what these this styles, which styles come out and do we want to do it, want to pass it, what's your strategy. There's one that I like, which is actually 
pretty much ignoring all these order cards, but sell the one just equal to the value, and then you get some points some as points well. Out of it as yeah, well. and that was really powerful. We uh, we like that. I like that one. I don't know if you do. I think you're the one that suggested that. So yeah. We certainly worked. Um, yeah, when we played the Australia one. Um, it came out fairly early and there was one that came out early that let you draw more vines and it really did focus a, a wine making strategy. It meant we didn't have to look as hard for the uh, visitor cards to score extra yes. points. So there are different because strategies. it's well known that there's ways of you know, yeah. I've heard I've won a game of viticulture Without cooperative with I think I sold two cheap wines <laughs> early in the game but everything yeah, else came yeah, yeah. from visitors yeah and i've heard stories of people who've won without making wine ever that's right that's right that's even the original viticulture yes it is that kind of game where there are ways to victory and depending on what tiles come out depending on what scenarios whether you randomize this event deck and so on it's very uh, very very interesting and very i don't know it feels it feels slow at the start, but then towards kind of like the middle, towards the end, and hopefully full feeling, and that's actually a good feeling, whether we win or lose. <laughs> it does have that switch. It goes from where, and Viticulture's like this. So well, the engine right? building, engine it building. It goes from where money is yeah. really tight to where you've suddenly got enough wine oh, yeah. and good wine to make a whole lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, and you no longer need, well, in the, ba in the normal game, you would no longer need it. Now you need to uh, start working this space to turn it into influence. Yeah, and the fact that you can exchange things with your with other other players cooperatively is good because then all right, um, I'll give you all my money and you go to this place and get a bunch of this, for example. Mm -hmm. So it's saving the amount of turns you mm -hmm. you use. But what's interesting is you can't trade the visitors. I know. Uh, which means you've mm -hmm. got to use the trades to get the things that optimizes those vis visitors into the hands of the players who have mm -hmm. them, uh, which I think um, mechanically works quite well. It is quite well, but I wish like, oh, this is this would be good on you. Can you can't you just draw this one? No, yeah. but it's nothing you can do. So overall, that's you asked me before, and you yeah. already gave your opinion anyway. So what do you think? Anyway. Yeah, so I think, you know, one of the things, I'll, I'll preface it by saying that I'm sometimes quite uh, skeptical about worker placement cooperative games. Um, you know, I've always thought the pandemic style of cooperative game where you get a few small actions and then the game does something to you and you've got to respond. I've always thought that was the sweet spot for cooperative. cooperative fighting fires. Yeah. When you've got a game that only has six rounds, and you're doing a lot of things across that round, you can plan a sixth of the game at, at a time, essentially. You can do a lot of pre-planning planning, and it becomes very uh, puzzly rather than game, necessarily. And that's as a general comment about... Um, worker placement as worker placement cooperative. Co what other um, cooperative worker placement games that you can think of, that you can think of? <laughs> Let us know. And does it work for you? But ultimately, yeah, ultimately I find, um, I found this to be quite fun. I thought six rounds was uh, enough times that the game did things back to you that you had to pivot and respond. Uh, and because so much of, because there is so much that comes from what cards and visitors you draw and how that's a critical part of the game, you've got to work gaining those visitors and then really um, making them work for you. So I think there is enough of that randomness in the game to make it um, to make it quite a good puzzle. Puzzle. We've only played it. Two. We've only played it at two players. I don't know if I'd be playing it at six players. Or oh, it, it goes up to six players as well up, as the main. Okay. It can go up to six. I don't know if I would want that many uh, voices at the table. I think I'd prefer a smaller group because of the amount of optimization that's going. Probably two, two to three is probably a good sweet spot let us know as well if you have played it what's your favorite scenario maybe or how many players is your favorite sweet spot the other thing i'd say for this um you know one of the reasons i really preferred uh tuscany to original mm -hmm. is when i played the original game and it was just the summer winter actions i always found um 
even though everyone kind of did diverging things towards the start of the game, often it all came back down to wine and everyone was yeah. fighting over the yes, same action spaces. I remember that. That was the discussion as well that we had yeah. earlier. Yeah. And I found that um, Tuscany, by breaking it into the different seasons and adding a couple of things, opened up more options and meant people could diversify a little bit more. So you know, instinctively, because I know Tuscany is very popular, I was slightly surprised that it went back to the basic summer winter option. Um, but ultimately, because of the way that you could make these action spaces unlimited, um, that's okay. It worked more effectively this time, yeah. and it became much because you were trying to optimize your actions rather than um, rather than fighting for actions. Fight for actions. Yeah, yeah it, it became it worked well. Plus, there's this one as well. Sorry, there's where is it? Make up uh, no fill orders, which you can you know you don't have to fight, and you can also do this options, which we actually hardly ended up going there at times um, at some of the games and we we'll just go there uh, but otherwise if this doesn't have it then go there yeah. totally totally um like that game yeah and it also you know the other thing i remember with the basic board and you see it in this co-op as well is that um it's you you want to do a lot of summer actions early and the winter actions yeah. become more valuable later later in the game. yeah and that's where the training and the hat removal um comes to the fore because when you've got those flexible workers especially if you're knocking winter hats off early in the game because you want to do your engine building uh, suddenly you don't have enough actions to fill those final orders and push the 25 <laughs> yes. so yeah it makes that um, that actually it takes a play or two to realize how clever that mechanism is it is very clever so well done well done for making this cooperative version um, sort of like I, I heard about what happened that the cards were replaced um uh, that's that's done done and dusted so we you know we think that overall it is a great game it's a great cooperative take on the game that we we also enjoy yep. anything else Heron? no that's all from me uh we um we don't we're not wine drinker but you know a lot of people play these while having one on the side which is very appropriate um, but regardless, drinking wine or not, it's still a good game. If I drink wine, no, I, I hardly drink. So if I drink, then I, my mind is cloudy and I can't really contribute and I will bring down the team by doing something bad, probably. Yes. <laughs> by drawing vines in round six. Drawing vine in round six, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's not really true. It's like, oh, this one looks good. I don't know, but it is a really tight game, a really, really cool game. We'll play it again. Indeed. And that's it. Have you played Viticulture and or Viticulture World? What do you think? Do you like cooperative game or do you just one of those that just like competitive game? That is okay. Let us know in the comments. And uh, thank you so much for watching this. Uh, if you feel like this is useful uh, it will be really helpful if you can hit that like button and subscribe to us if you haven't done so already hit the bell as well if you want to get notification when we have new videos i'm also on instagram instagram find me there and hopefully we'll see you next time bye bye <laughs>